Right, 2016, uh, the Leave Insert Higher Level question one. And on this one, what we're going to be doing is determine the concentration of ethanoic acid and vinegar. So we'll rush through the theory bits, get into the calculations then. So the first bit, describe in detail the procedures involved in measuring a 25 centimeter cube sample of the vinegar and diluting it using the ionized water to exactly 250 centimeters cubed. So 15 marks out of 50 marks, huge proportion. You have to spend your time. You might feel like a waste of time, but this is the one that builds the marks. Now there's two parts in this, measuring it and diluting it. So how do you measure the 25 centimeters cubed of vinegar initially? So when you're measuring it, you're gonna use a pipette. Now think of all the things you did in your pipette. Firstly, you're gonna to have to rinse the pipette with deionized water. I'm writing this real rough. Rinse the pipette with deionized water to remove impurities, and then rinse it with a vinegar solution to coat the sides that otherwise may cause dilution. Then using a pipette filler, draw up two or 25 centimeters cubed of the vinegar until the bottom of the meniscus rests in the calibration mark. So that's it. Kind of maybe nine marks for the measure in there. Rinse in your pipette with the ionized water to remove impurities. Then rinse it with a vinegar solution to coat the sides. Use a pipette filler, draw up 25 centimeters cubed of the vinegar until the bottom of the meniscus rests on the calibration mark. Read at eye level. They love that one. Read at eye level. Couldn't beat it. Now diluting it. So when we're diluting it, release your 25 centimeters cubed of your vinegar into a clean, volumetric flask. Add deionized water until within one centimeter of the calibration mark. Then use a dropper or uh, add deionized water until the bottom of the meniscus rests in the calibration mark. Stopper and invert 20 times to ensure an evenly mixed or homogeneous solution. So great waffle, lovely marks. Suitable indicator for this one, since it's a weak acid and a strong base, we're using phenolphthalein. And the color change here, it's pink, this lovely pink color to colorless, pink to colorless. Now we're into the calculation. So calculate the number of moles of sodium hydroxide in each 25 centimeters cube portion. Now what I would probably do here, first of all, I love getting a titration conclusion. So. If I was writing out a tit con of this, I know it's going to be all over the place here. Um, 25 centimeters cubed of the vinegar was diluted to 250. So I'd be writing in the top 25 and 250. That's a 1 in 10 dilution. So in both the vinegar titration and also a bleach titration, which you'll cover in sixth year, there's a dilution factor. So we're going to be multiplied by 10 for our dilution factor. Um, and the diluted vinegar was titrated with a previously standardized. Standardized just means a solution whose concentration is accurately known, which contained 1.2 grams of sodium hydroxide and 500 centimeters cubed of the solution. On average, this is my, my tetcons coming in, 18.75 centimeters cubed, X molar, because I don't know its concentration, CH3COH, which is my ethanoic acid or my vinegar, was titrated against three lines was titrated against 25 centimeters cubed now in this question we don't know its molarity yet of our sodium hydroxide but what they provided me with is enough information in order to work out its molarity what it said there so molarity means moles in a liter what they've told me is there's 1.2 grams of NaOH in 500 centimeters cubed. So I've got to change my grams to moles and my 500 centimeters cubed to liters. So initially, I'll get the number of grams in a liter. So we can simply there multiply that by two. 1.2 grams and 500 in order to have the same concentration, that would be 2.4 grams in a liter. Now, I must bring it back to moles. Anytime we're going back to moles, we're dividing. We're using this bit of our mole triangle, grams to moles, divide by the RMM. So anytime you go back to moles, you're dividing. 
and the RMM of sodium hydroxide. This is an awful mess altogether. Look at page 79 of your formula books. Get the masses. Sodium is 23. It's got one oxygen atom, mass number 16, and one hydrogen atom. If we add up all those, we get 40. So, to work out the number of moles in this, it's your mass in grams, 2.4 grams. Divide that by 40. And we get 0 0.06, and that's moles per litre. Now, technically, we didn't have to do that. We could have worked out the grams in 25 centimetres cubed and then divided by the relative molecular mass to work out that answer. But I'm a creature of habits. So that's one method of doing it. Get the molarity, and then you could plug that back in up here. It's got 0.06m. Yeah, so as I say, different ways to do those. You could initially work out the number of grams in 25, dividing, uh, not by 10, sorry, by 20. Um, dividing that by 20. And I divide it by the relative molecular mass. So whatever way you like, um, just make sure your units are all okay. So I'm going to rub out this bit here now. And then work like it's a normal question, as if they give me the molarity. So the better work at the start was get its molarity, get that big game. And then it's just a normal bog standard question. And here it's in first principles. So see part one. The number of moles in 25 centimetres cubed. I've got that big M now, 0.06M. That means the number of moles in a litre. How do I say that in maths? 0.06 in a thousand. And we have 25 times that by 25. Somebody who's good at maths could be saying, I'll just divide that by 40. Whatever you wish. And we get 0 0.0015. Now from that, we can work out the number of moles of our ethanoic acid. Because the ratio here, if you look at the balanced equation, is 1 is to 1. So we've got the equivalent number of moles of ethanoic acid. And that's in, this is the crucial bit, 18.75 centimetres cubed. Now usually, I would leave it like that. But in this question, they're being pesky. There's technically saying per centimeter cubed. Per centimeter cubed means in one centimeter cubed. So that's the number of moles we have in 18.75. When you see that slash, that just means divide it by. This will give me the answer. Just to be awkward to give you that there. 0 0.4078. Or 8 by 10 to the minus 5 moles per centimeter cubed of ethanoic acid and that's diluted vinegar it's the diluted vinegar d part one now find the concentration in the original vinegar in terms of moles per liter so i've got the number of moles in one centimeter cubed so what i'm going to do is going to bring it up to a liter and then bring in the dilution factor Alternatively, bring in the dilution factor first of all, and then times it by a thousand. Either way, you'll get the same answer. So we've got the number of moles, one, two, three, four zeros per centimeter cubed. So we'll have times that by a thousand. Move that decimal point three places to the right. We get zero point one, two, three, yep. Zero point zero eight moles per liter which is written as that big M, and that is of my diluted vinegar. Now, if you look back to the very top, there was the dilution factor into that count. It's a 1 in 10. So we're going to have to times that by the dilution factor, which is 10, and we get 0 0.8M. Now, I always put that in the calculator, otherwise I'll forget about multiplying that by 10 into my next step. And that's the number of moles per litre of my original or my undiluted vinegar. Otherwise, if we didn't dilute the vinegar, it would require an excess amount of reagents, too much sodium hydroxide. And then it's percentage weight per volume. That's asking you how many grams in a hundred centimeter cubed. Percentage means out of a hundred. So I've got the number of moles in a litre to go to grams, Anytime you're leaving moles, you're multiplying 
by their relative molecular mass. Now it's the RMM of ethanoic acid. So page 79 of your formula books, get the mass numbers out. I've got two carbon atoms, so 2 by 12 is 24, four hydrogen atoms, and two oxygen atoms. And when you sum up those, you get 60. So 0 0.8 by 60 will give me the number of grams in a liter, 48 yeah. grams in a liter. And we want the number of grams in 100 centimeters cubed. So remember, one liter is 1,000 centimeters cubed. To get the grams in 100 centimeters cubed, you could just divide that by 10. That's perfect. Perfect. Or another way of doing that is 48 grams in a liter, which is 1,000 centimeters cubed. And to make anything a percent, times that by 100. And you get the same thing, 4.8% weight per volume. So a difficult calculation, especially that bit at the start where we worked with the molarity. But the key thing here in vinegar is the dilution factor. And even that's a wee for three one. Starting with, this is just going through your fifth year titrations, the order in which you did them. Starting with a primary standard solution made from anhydrous sodium carbonate. What two titrations are needed to standardize a sodium hydroxide solution? Now, if you're working back, in order to work out a, the concentration of sodium hydroxide, you need a strong acid. It's a strong acid and a strong base. And the strong acid that we use is HCl. And we worked out that concentration from our standard solution of sodium carbonate. So the first titration you did was anhydrous sodium carbonate titrated against a strong acid. The one we actually used was hydrochloric acid. And then once we worked out that concentration, so we knew it could have been 0.1 molar HCl from our titration, we had their strong acid or HCl titrated against our strong base sodium hydroxide. So there are the two uh, titrations.